So, so welcome everyone this afternoon to the annual spring section leaders meeting. I am Carolyn McGregor. I am the sections program specialist and um, just a, a big welcome on behalf of the sections team and my other staff members here at uh, the Washington State Bar Association. We're happy to see you. Um, next slide. Uh, we will be recording today. And so um, whatever you need to do to be more comfortable here at the meeting, and we're recording for a future playback and uh, for our records and for uh, viewing by those members who were not able to make it. So welcome, um, our plan for today's meeting. We're gonna begin with uh, a little celebration of 50 years of WISBA sections and some team updates. Then we'll be moving on to uh, FY24, fiscal year 24 budget planning. Then uh, following that up with working with our WISBA CLE team. And then an open dialogue session. And then we'll be closing, take any questions. And uh, we're hoping to fit this all into 90 minutes. So we didn't plan an official break, um, but just invite you to step away and come back as needed for your own comfort. Okay, um, next slide. Okay, I'd like to um, just quickly introduce uh, my, my section's teammates. Um, we'll be hearing from Noah Becky, section's program coordinator, coordinator Shell Gigax, our member services and engagement administrative assistant. Um, and I'm pretty sure that Julianne Unite, our member services and engagement manager may pop in uh, with a few words during our open dialogue session, if not sooner to answer uh, questions. Um, okay, next slide, please. Congratulations with the sections and section leaders on 50 years of serving your members. Um, this just happens to be the 50th year of sections at WISBA. And we thought we would celebrate with a short trivia quiz. Um, just to, I know that's very tiny print here, but this is volume 27, <laughs> number two, from February of 1973. This is the front of the Washington State Bar News. And if you see this other highlighted part here, uh, a feature in this issue is bar ad sections. And a little article in here is just about um, the Board of Governors deciding to begin that program. And I believe um, throughout that year, I think this was a February issue, uh, more articles followed about which sections were approved and uh, the process and what they hope to gain from beginning the program. Okay, so uh, next slide. So I'm gonna launch a trivia quiz. Uh, once I launch it, you will see a window pop up with the first question. You can submit your guess, and then I'll share the answer with everyone. You'll see it here on the screen. And then, you know, once you submit your guess, you'll get the next question, but we'll share the answer with you because you wouldn't see the answers until the end. At the very end, you'll see how many you answered correctly. So are you ready to go? Hear the enthusiasm and excitement in the room. Okay. Does everyone have question number one? Yep, question yes. number one. Ed's nodding, okay. The WISBA currently has how many sections? A few seconds and then I'll ask for the answer. And I think we can actually, there we go. Okay, so the choices we have are 20, 26, 23, and 29. And if everyone's entered their answers, uh, what is the answer to question number one? Please display. 29. I think that I probably might know that number more than anyone else. <laughs> in the room, I'm my other teammates, but um, yes, I often think about how many sections we are um, supporting. 
Okay, question number two. Which of the following is an actual former name for the section's bulletin? We have section LAN, Wisbus sectionality, the section connection, and the sound of sections. And the answer is section LAN. I actually don't recall the year. I think it was in the last 15 years that that was, that was the title of the bullet. Okay, question number three. Which, what year did the Wisba Bog approve the creation of the sections? 1947, 1965, 1973, and 1989. Okay, I'm going to share that it is the 50th anniversary of WISBA sections, not to influence your answer in any way whatsoever. And the answer is 1973. Okay, question number four. How many sections did the bug approve that year in 1973? We have one, 12, 21, or seven. And the answer is, well, okay, number five, which of the following sections was not one of the original 12 sections upon the creation by the BOG in February of 1973? Taxation, labor and employment law, family law, or administrative law? And this is one that was not one of the original 12. And the answer is labor and employment law. Okay, next question. Which of these sections was, was one of the original 12 sections? And we have elder law, intellectual property, environmental and land use law, and senior lawyers. And the answer is environmental and land use law. Number seven, how many signatures are required for the Board of Governors to consider the creation of a new section? We have 40, 111, very specific number, 75 and 150. And the answer is 150. Question eight, what are the major functions of a WISDA section? We have networking, seasoned voice for the legislative process, CLE offerings, a reason to party, all of the above or none of the above. And the answer is all of the above. Last question. Of the 45,000 lawyers that make up the WISWAS membership, how many are members of sections? And we have 9,000, 20,000, 12,000, and 5,000. And the answer is 9,000. Okay, so that's our quiz. Do we have anyone who got nine out of nine? No takers. How about seven or eight out of nine? Randy got nine, zero, nine. <laughs> um, do we have any takers? How about four to five? Borg, Michael, congratulations. Okay, at this point, I'm not gonna keep asking because I don't wanna embarrass anyone. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed that little quiz. It was, it was fun to do a little bit of research and learn more about the history of sections. Okay. So um, now we're gonna be moving on, next slide, to uh, some sections updates. I'm going to hand it over to Noah Becky, our sections program coordinator, to uh, give you an elections update as well as a few other updates. Thank you very much. Uh, I do want to just say really quick that when Carolyn and I were putting the answers together, I kind of threw some of those questions together before I looked up the answers, and I would have gotten 
the same amount. I think I only got about three of them right when we were researching. <laughs> so don't feel too bad. <clears throat> so first thing we're gonna talk about real fast is elections, uh, nominating committees. The majority of nominating committees should have received their uh, application, or I'm sorry, their uh, instructions for completing the uh, candidate slate form. Uh, you will be able to submit that form, hopefully get that to us by May 15th. Again, this is the majority of sections. There are several sections that have a slightly different timeline than the others. Um, but like I said, we hope to have those candidate slate forms to us by May 15th uh, with a ballot finalization date of May 30th. That gives us enough time to create each of the section's ballots, test them, and make sure that they all work properly before voting begins on June 5th. <clears throat> um, and again, like I said, there are certain sections that have slightly different timelines. Uh, and if you have any questions about those timelines or you aren't sure of what they are, please reach out to us and we'll definitely help you with that. Uh, but again, the majority of sections uh, have followed this timeline. Uh, so yes, May 15th, make sure we get those candidate slate forms in, uh, the ballots will be finalized and needing your approval on May 30th or before May 30th. Uh, and the voting will begin again for most sections on June 5th. For all sections, you will be receiving the results, the final results of those ballots, uh, of those voting for uh, voting on July 7th. Um, and that is not different for the sections. All sections will be receiving that information uh, on July 7th. Um, one more time, just to reiterate, this isn't every section, uh, but one thing we want to stress is please make sure that you are responding, looking for and responding to uh, section emails from WISBA in a timely manner so that we can make sure we hit these deadlines correctly uh, without any issues. Next slide, please. Uh, next thing up is info sheets. So each section has their info sheet uploaded to their web page. As you'll see in the little picture here, we have uh, a view of what it looks like just underneath your, your section history or your, uh, your section about section <clears throat> of your web page. You'll have those four links, and one of them is year and review. If you click on that, you'll be able to see the info sheet that we've created. Uh, it comes from all the content that we were given from your fiscal year 22 section annual reports. Uh, those, section, those section annual reports are uh, vital to making these. So uh, just keep in mind that we'll be coming around to that in, in several months here as well. Um, if you have any questions about those, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, they are designed as a tool that you can use to help with uh, pu publicity, member recruitment, uh, garnering information just for your own knowledge about what you can do to expand your section, uh, things like that. If you have any questions, like I said earlier, please let us know. Uh, if you're, there's any issues, I believe I've tested all the links and they all worked when I tested them on Friday. Uh, if for some reason it's not working for you, let me know and we'll, we'll make sure that gets fixed. Next slide, please. Uh, last thing, I'm going through each of the section's web pages and updating, making sure all the information is correct and current. Uh, one of the things that we will be adding to all web, uh, section web pages will be a navigation, a page navigation section. So in the photo you see here under the join now button, there will be these anchor links. And each of these anchor links will take you directly to that heading within the web page. Uh, this will make it easier for people who are coming to your section's web page to go directly to the sections they need to take a look at. Uh, it also helps with keeping things organized uh, and makes it easier for you as well to check on each of the sections to make sure they're current and that we're able to make keeping them uh, up to date. Uh, as I said, I, you will be each section will be receiving an email uh, as I get to those 
Uh, we are deep in elections, so I'm not getting through as many as I would like at the moment, uh, but hopefully we'll be getting onto those soon. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. It should be going to uh, the executive committee and we can work together on what kind of anchor links you would like on your web page, uh, making sure that all the information is update, uh, updated and uh, seeing if there's anything you'd like to add to your web page. Um, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me anytime, uh, email or call my uh, work phone. So yeah, that's all I have, thank you. Thanks, Noah. Um, now we're gonna turn it over to Shell Gigax, our member services and engagement administrative assistant for uh, news about upcoming listserv cleanup and uh, another item or two. Shell? Hey, everybody. Uh, I, uh, we haven't met her, you don't know who I am. My name is Shell, I'm the administrative assistant for the member services and engagement team. Um, and I'm just gonna go over a couple of quick items for the listserv cleanup and then the Young Lawyer Liaison program for you. Um, so we'll start with the listserv cleanup. Um, we started this last year. Um, it has been done in the past, but last year was the first year that I have done it, um, put it that way. <laughs> um, so we want to make sure that all of current section members are subscribed to the WISBA administrative listservs because that is a huge benefit of your sections. Um, so we are going to go through and just remove those that are not current section members and make sure that everybody is up to date on that. Um, so just a short timeline for you, we will be drafting communication and implementing that throughout um, mid to early May and then early June. So notifications to you section leaders will go out early in May, letting you know that that is coming up and going to take place. And then uh, we will send out a separate notification to section members. Uh, and that'll be kind of mid-May timeframe. And then the cleanup itself will take place in late May to early June. Uh, big question on this that we get from a lot of members, um, and you're probably thinking already, what if I use a different email for my, uh, my listserv than I have for my WISBA account? Um, that is a great question. We will be sending out a uh, Microsoft Forms for members to complete that can indicate the email address that you want to use for the listserv, as well as your um, your MyWISBA account email address so that we can differentiate those and I can take out the ones that need to be taken out because unfortunately those two programs don't talk to each other. So that's the manual process uh, that we will do on the back end for you. Um, but that will go out um, in that mid-May timeframe there. Uh, next slide. All right. And then so the Young Lawyer Liaison to Sections program. So this was kicked off on April 11th. Not all sections are eligible in this recruiting cycle. As you may be aware, it's a two-year position. So we are kicking off recruiting for positions that will start October 1st, 2023 and run through 2025. There are a couple of sections um, that have a one-year interim opening. Um, and those were indicated on that kickoff announcement as well. So if you did not see that announcement, please double check your inboxes, section leaders, and go back and see if you can find that. If you need me to resend, please, please feel free to, to reach out and let me know. It's important that we get those section checklists back from you. Without that, we cannot communicate to your candidates what you want them to accomplish in their position. Um, and that check, uh, excuse me, checklist submission deadline is going to be May 10th. Uh, and again, not all sections, not all 29 sections are eligible for that this recruiting cycle. So if you didn't receive it, it, it may be that your section is not eligible. Um, and then applications will be made available to candidates on through MyWISBA on May 25th. And they'll have about a month to finish that application. So that deadline will be the 27th of June. And then your selections for who you would like to serve as your young lawyer liaison for this fiscal year or upcoming fiscal year are due back to us on August 10th. And then we have a orientation for incoming young lawyer liaisons on September 25th. And we encourage all of you as section leaders to participate in that as well. So. Thank you, Shell. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, concerns, anything at all, please feel free to reach out. 
um, just send me an email, reach out to Carolyn, Noah, myself. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. And if we have any questions now about any of the um, sections team updates, uh, we probably have time for a couple. Hey, Caroline. It's Adrian. Hey, Adrian. Hi, it's Adrian from the health law section. I had a question about the Young Lawyers Liaison section checks checklist. What is that? Shell, do you want to address that one? Yeah, absolutely. So the sections checklist um, is sent to the section leaders. And that is actually the selection form that goes over the responsibilities uh, that are going to responsibilities that will be of your young lawyer liaison for your section. Okay, is that mandatory for our sections to have? Uh, if you are recruiting for a young lawyer liaison to sections, yes. Okay, thank you, Shell. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, now we're moving on to budget planning. And we have um, Maggie Yu, who's our controller, and she's joining us from the finance team. Uh, welcome, Maggie. Thank you, Kellen. Thank you, everyone. Um, for for who, uh, most of you don't know me, I'm uh, Maggie Yu, uh, controller at Westpa. And uh, from finance team, we also have uh, another member, Darshida Pato, uh, joining this meeting as well, who is our senior accountant and uh, budget analyst. Um, all right, so let's start our 2024 budget planning. Next slide, please. So for fiscal year 2024 budget schedule, uh, May 1st, so budget materials sent out to section leaders. And then May, between May 1st to July 3rd, section leaders complete the budget material. And then uh, June, between that, June 26th, uh, budget process drop in costs. And um, July 3rd, is the deadline for section to submit budget worksheet and a dues change request. And July 21st is WESPA budget and audit committee meeting review draft section budgets. And then July 7th through 30th, staff review of a section budget request and a follow up. And then uh, August 18th, uh, final draft of a 24 budget work should do. And then um, August 25th, DNA review final 24 section budgets. And the last one is the September 8th through 9th is the Board of a Governor approve the budgets. So this is the schedule for 2024 budget. Anybody has questions? Okay, I take as no. Next slide, please. Documents, as in the past. So items for submission. So 24 section budget request worksheet, and then request to change member dues. Information items, section membership dues history, and the section member count history and the section fiscal policies, and then 2024 per member charge calculation. So all material, dis material due distributed on May 1st. Okay, next slide, please. So here's the items for submissions. Uh, 2024 section budget request worksheet. So simple request worksheet included in a meeting material. And the worksheet includes 20, uh, 2020 to 2023 year to the date budget and actual financial information. 
and we have 2024 budget column for section leaders to input dollar amount. And the last one is a narrative column to be filled out by section explaining the purpose of the funds and any calculations or additional information to support 2024 budget figure. And I'm gonna pause here. I think I wanna uh, give it to Carolyn to uh, speak about uh, the future planning for the next year's budget. Thank you, Maggie. Yeah, <clears throat> I wanted to say a few words about the narrative column and then just thinking about um, when you're approaching your budget planning. Um, the narrative column is incredibly helpful, I think not only to sections team as we're working with you during the coming budget year, uh, but it's also helpful for your section during that year to look back at what you were thinking when you were planning your budget, as well as for your future executive committees who can look back to previous years and understand what you were thinking um, as you determine your budget. So, you know, looking at the budget history, it's really helpful to have that um, narrative that outlines the thought processes, especially as, you know, executive committees uh, have turnover with who is working on the budgets, making decisions about uh, programming and activities. And so it can be really helpful to have that extra piece um, and, and make that narrative column as detailed as you can. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean detailed to the point of determining every single activity to, you know, to the letter, but uh, capturing your thinking as you decide what, what funds you're gonna assign to which description and which um, category. Um, and one other note as you're thinking about your budgeting process is that you might be sure to include whoever is like either the, the chair elect or anyone else who might be actually leading the activities for the coming year to have those individuals be involved in the budget planning process. Um, because if, if the chair elect is thinking about things they might wanna be doing for the coming year, but they weren't present in the decision-making around the budget to determine where to put those extra dollars to you know, do those programs that they have in mind. Um, it's, it's more tedious after the fact to try to go back and correct for that. It's not impossible, um, but it's much more efficient to do that planning ahead of time. And, um, and then one last point is, if you are thinking about exploring a certain program or, or new programs or any ideas, um, and you may not be sure yet that that's what you want to do, but it may be something to explore in the coming year, and you have the funds in your fund balance, it's okay to go ahead and put the funds in those categories for your FY24 budget, even if you don't end up using them, um, because at least you have, you're prepared to uh, make those decisions once the next fiscal year comes along. Um, and again, you can put that in your narrative, you know, thinking about doing this. And that's why we have, you know, maybe more funds here than we did the previous. So um, the more you can add about your thought process when you're budgeting um, and be planning ahead in that way, the, uh, I think the more successful and uh, seamless the process can be when you reach the... Thanks, Maggie. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. So uh, next one is the request to change a member dues. So only needed if planning to change a member dues for 2024. And both items due by July 3rd of this year. Next slide, please. So information items. Uh, first one is section membership dues history. So the document shows the membership dues for each section for the past five years, which is 2019 through 2023. Second one is section membership count history. So document shows the membership counts for your section over the past five years as well as the year to the date count. So 2019 to 2023 and the uh, section physical policies provides information about the West Bus guidelines for section financial activity, fund balance guidelines, 
So section fund balance should be enough to sustain a consistent level of programming in the event. They are serving fund, oops, can see it just a second. The um, fluctuation of the annual section membership. So six months worth of a direct program expense are recommended as guidelines. So sections are discouraged from maintaining fund balance in excess, excess two, two years of was the direct expense, uh, priming expenses and a spe specific purposes. I see have a chat popping up. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. So information items um, for 24 per membership char charge calculation. The 24 per membership charge is scheduled to be reviewed and provide uh, approved by budget and audit committee at their 28th meeting, April. A detailed breakdown of calculation behind the charge will be distributed along with the other budget material on May 1st. Uh, section split cover memo is ap applicable um, also. So which means uh, uh, the sections uh, to do business with the uh, uh, West Bar seminar uh, will have a, uh, receive a split um, from WSBA. Next slide, please. Questions. If you have any question or need assistance with your budget, please reach out to your section team or the finance team. Here is the email address you can reach out. Next slide, please. Okay. Okay, thank you, Maggie. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna move on to working with the WISBA CLE team here at WISBA and we have- um, Carolyn. Oh, yes. We do have a hand up really quick. Oh, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Carolyn. I just wanna take- Oh. I'm having mute issues. Thanks, Carolyn. I just wanna take a few, just a minute or two to talk a little bit and and highlight a few things about the budget process itself. And, and, and I'm gonna hit some high marks that I hope will be helpful as you're working through the budget. So uh, to the kind of big takeaways from what Maggie went over is kind of your, uh, the deadline for getting budgets in is July 3rd. That's kind of your date that you're working towards as you and your executive committee are thinking through uh, you know, what activities you're going to be doing in 24. So the budget materials that come out May 1, you're aiming for July 3rd to get all that back into us. And hopefully that two month period gives you time to meet with your sections executive committees to talk about what you're planning for the coming year so that all that stuff can be fit into the budget. We did mention a drop in session. You'll be getting an invitation for the drop in session. I believe probably from our sections team, Carolyn, I'm assuming you will uh, send out an invite for that. And it's probably gonna be over Zoom, I suspect. Mm -hmm. uh, so just watch for that. And if you're stuck somewhere, that's a great place to come to, to get assistance. But the other thing I wanna flag is <clears throat> assistance is available anytime you need it when you're going through the budget sec the budget process. So if you've got questions about budgets, just get a hold of Carolyn or send it to that section budget email and we'll help you. You don't need to wait for a drop in necessarily. So if you've got questions, we're here and available to help you. Uh, the other thing I would say is the budgets are just that, right? They're, they're a plan and they're an idea of what you wanna do. So do the best you can with it in terms of coming up with what activities you're gonna do, what, um, financial numbers you're gonna to attach to those activities. But one thing I wanna flag for everyone, 
uh, that might not have been through uh, amending your budget or kind of making changes to it once we get into a current year is you're not completely married to that budget whenever we get into the fiscal year. So if you have things that come up, uh, uh, activities, programs you want to add, something you want to do, we have an amendment process for the budget. There's a there's a things we have to do. There's a process for it. But um, just know that you want to make your best effort with the budget. But if you need to change something later, we have a process to do that. And Carolyn's really great at working working through those processes with you. Um, the other thing is not all of you, and I just want to kind of uh, put this out there as you're thinking about doing the budgets, there's going to be some things that are pre-filled in those worksheets so that you won't necessarily need to worry about. One is the estimated section splits. If any of you uh, partner, and many of you do, partner with WISBA CLE, uh, we'll come up with the estimated split for the for what we're estimating you'll receive for the split for the coming year. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, the PMC, the same way, that's all going to be uh, figured in. I do want to flag um, the PNC, P, the per member charge hasn't been finalized yet. It's going to be reviewed at budget and audit on the 28th, Friday afternoon. So if any of you are interested in that conversation, I invite you to attend the budget and audit committee meeting. That's taking place. I believe in the afternoon on Friday. So um, once the budget and audit committee approves the PMC, that, that'll be sent out with the materials on May 1st. So you'll have all that information on May 1st. So I just wanted to point out a few of those things, just as you're thinking through the budget process, July 3rd's kind of your date, and we're always here to help answer questions, uh, either through a drop-in or just reach out to us. And I see that um, Miriam has a question and Kevin, either I can, I can field this. Um, you can follow up if you'd like. Uh, the question is, can you clarify if budgets are use it or lose it, or if they roll over to the next fiscal year? And that's um, a really wonderful question. So um, to clarify, the budgets are really a planning tool. So the budgets, like when you are talking about what money is in your the different budget categories. It's just a way of categorizing your planning for the year. But your section fund balance is not a use it or lose it. The money that you have in your fund balance carries over from one year to the next. So you will create a new budget each year, but that's just a projection of how you think you're going to use your funds um, or what revenue you expect to come in. Um, Kevin, if you have anything to add or Maggie about that answer to that question. No, I think what you said is right on. Yes, thank you, Karen. Are there any other questions about the budget process or budgets before we move on? And as Kevin said, you this is not your last chance by any means to ask any questions, so. Okay, let's move on to our um, working with CLE. Uh, Kevin Plachi is going to join us for this section, uh, Director of Advancement, and also Shanti Raghu, who is our Education Programs Manager. Kevin, I think you're on first. I think Shanti's gonna kick it off and then okay. hand it over. Next slide. So we're shifting focus a little bit okay. here. Um, and I just want to briefly start off today with a roadmap. Um, we'll begin with welcome and introductions, talk a little bit about WISBA WSBA CLE portfolios, and dive into some of the ways sections may partner with WSBA CLE, including program options and considerations. So during uh, this presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about the details involved with partnering with WSBA CLE. And by the end, hopefully you'll leave with some things to think about as you plan and budget for next fiscal year. Uh, as we move through these slides, please feel free to drop your questions in the chat. We'll try to answer them and address them as we go. And we'll also save time at the next slide, please. 
So um, Carolyn also already briefly introduced us. Um, my name is Shanti Ragu, and I serve as the Education Programs Manager here at the WSBA. And I lead the team responsible for developing and delivering live and on-demand CLE. I will hand it to Kevin uh, for introductions and to walk us through the next few slides. All right, thank you, Shanti. And my name is Kevin Platchy. I know a lot of you. Um, for those that don't know me, I am the Advancement Department Director here at the Bar. And uh, maybe briefly, I'll give you a high level of what the Advancement Department is. It gets confusing sometimes. We're not a fundraising department, first of all. Uh, we're really the department within the organization that focuses on uh, member services and benefits. So um, in furtherance of our overall mission. So the programs within our department are our CLE program, the sections, we support the 29 practice sections. We have a new member uh, program. We have rural practice that we run out of our department. Uh, we have a mentorship program. We have our member wellness program, our professional responsibility program, which contains the ethics line and our practice management assistance program. So a lot of our uh, programming, as you can tell, is really in place to support members so that our members can serve the, can, can, can serve the public more effectively. So that's a little bit about the advancement department. Um, we can go to the next slide. So talking about CLE, the first thing I want to do before we even start talking about CLE is to thank you for your partnership because the sections are a very crucial partner, not only with the advancement department, but also in um, working with the WISBA to promote our mission. And uh, the WISBA mission is, is in place. Our purpose is to serve the public and the members of the bar uh, to ensure the integrity of the legal profession and to also champion justice. And the sections further this mission in many ways. Uh, one of the big ways that we'll be talking about in this presentation is through education. So the sections, as you all may or may not know, uh, the sections really develop all of the substantive law programming that gets uh, distributed to our members. So that is a huge amount of, of education and information that the sections are responsible and, and help us in delivering to our members so that they can practice more competently. Uh, other things are mentorship that the sections provide, uh, many of the other things you do through your networking events, through other programs, also help us further the mission of serving members so that they can actually serve more competently and with more integrity to the public. Um, and so it's, I just wanna point out that um, we, especially and particularly in CLE, it would be very difficult to um, further this mission without sections because a good half of the educational programming that's provided to members is through the section. So I just want to give you, on behalf of this, uh, our entire team and department and the organization, a big thank you for being a, a partner in this with us. Uh, next slide. So the first thing to know about WISBA CLE, and we can go ahead and it, it, if these are animations, we can go ahead and put them up. Uh, the first thing to know about WISPA CLE, and I always like to talk about this, and because it's it 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 is important to know anyone that's working with WISPA CLE is that we're a self-sustaining program, and what that means is by policy, the WISPA CLE uh, operation uh, does not draw on license fees to operate. There's a little caveat with that. Uh, some of the uh, programming like legal lunchbox is subsidized through the general fund, but the, the overall WISPA CLE operation is self-sustaining. That means that uh, at, at minimum, we need to break even every year as an operation off of the uh, registration fees that we 
earn on both live and on-demand products. Um, and then within the WISBA CLE operation itself, there are several categories of programming. And the two that are bolded at the top are a big part of our programming. And sort of what I just talked about is section CLEs and then mini CLEs. And Shanti's gonna talk a lot more detail about what those are, but high level section CLEs are CLEs that are either a half day, full day, and that are ran under the WISPA fiscal policy where uh, sections receive splits on the revenue from those programs on both the live and the on-demand portion. Uh, the mini CLEs are really aimed at being more of a member benefit. Uh, and what that means is they're, they're small programs, they're usually, they're two hours or less. And generally, uh, many of the sections do them, many of you uh, develop and deliver these for free to members, uh, or at least to your section members, and then sometimes charge for non-section members. But the, the, the thing to know about these is they're two hours or less, and the maximum fee that can be charged for them is $35. So even if they're being, even if there's a fee charged, it's a very low fee. And so it's a way to get education out to our members at a free or low, through a free or low cost way. Uh, and then WISPA Presents is another portfolio and that's probably the next largest of that portfolio. And under that portfolio, we really focus on things other than substantive law that we're kind of uniquely situated to offer a lot of ethics programming gets done under that uh, category. Uh, attorney skills, if there are subject areas where there's overlap between practice areas, sometimes uh, we might do a program and as WISBA presents, or if there is emerging things within the profession or the law, we might uh, want to do programming in that area. And we're very mindful, just, just so you're aware, uh, we're very mindful to uh, try and not duplicate what sections are doing with education because we understand that uh, sections have a role to play in developing uh, programming, particularly if you're a practice section, a practice area section in your substantive area of law. So the next category is new member education. And this is a program that's really aimed at uh, new members coming into the profession. And we define new members as generally, it's a little more complex than this, but I'll simplify it down to license less than five years. Uh, and what this education is designed to do is give uh, various skills training and substantive training to new members to help them integrate into the profession better. One of our big programs in this area is uh, TAP, our trial advocacy program. And we have a two day seminar that goes over trial practice and then a one day mock trial where it gives uh, new members the opportunity to practice their litigation skills. Um, then we have legal lunchbox. That's what I mentioned before on the last Tuesday of every month over the lunch hour, we offer a free CLE. It's called a legal lunchbox program. And if you take it, a member who consistently takes CLEs through the legal lunchbox program could satisfy all of their CLE requirements within three years. We make sure to add programming in to this these categories that will satisfy the various uh, you know subcategories of the credits that are required like law and legal ethics uh, uh, general credits that kind of thing and then we have some regulatory programming that we work with our regulatory services department with and that's our uh, uh, reinstatement programs. And we run two of them, uh, one for attorneys and then one for LPOs. So uh, an attorney that's been inactive for more than six years could opt in to take this, uh, this program, the reinstatement program, instead of having to take the bar exam again. And we do open that up to as a regular CLE for an opportunity for members to take as well 
but there is a regulatory component that allows members to come back from inactive without having to do the hurdle of the bar exam again. Next slide. And I think that is all of my presentation. Shanti's gonna jump into more details around the section uh, programming that's offered. And I will turn it over to you, Shanti, to do that. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so with that broad overview of WISBA CLA programming, I want to dive into where sections come in. So next slide, please. As Kevin mentioned, um, sections can partner with WSBA CLE to deliver CLEs either through section CLEs, um, which is subject to the fiscal policy. We have a slide on that later. Um, and those programs are typically your half, full, or multi-day programs or mini CLEs. Um, so for, hang on just a minute. Um, before we move along to dive into each one of them in more detail, I wanted to emphasize a couple of things. So some sections do maybe focus on mini CLEs solely rather than half or full day programs, and some sections do some combination of the both. Regardless of what your section's planning to do, uh, I would just like to emphasize maybe a theme that you've heard throughout this uh, session is we'd encourage you to bring us on early during your planning if you can, because it's helpful for us to hear from you about what you're hoping to accomplish and to learn how we met, may better support as well as to guide you through some options and considerations. So questions are welcome. Um, we're here to help as WSBA staff. Um, some additional big picture things I thought to, to mention since uh, the last couple of years have been challenging from um, the planning and uh, development side. Uh, what are things looking like th these days? How is engagement faring? How are we facilitating programs? You might be wondering. Um, these days, more CLEs are being delivered via webcast only, with select ones delivered as hybrid uh, or with in-person attendees. I, I do want to mention that hybrid and in-person events, they are uh, well-received, but they do require thoughtful planning and an advanced timeline. Um, some examples are I'd encourage you to consider why people would want to come in person as opposed to attend virtually um, and the purpose of gathering and the experience you're hoping to create for your presenters and um, attendees. Next slide, please. Uh, so you've heard a lot about section CLEs, half day, full day versus mini CLEs. So I'm going to pull up a comparison. Next slide, please. And Kevin outlined this briefly previously. So, you know, what we'll see here is a big picture overview glance at a glance comparison about some of the major differences between mini CLEs versus a half day, full day CLE. Um, and the, those are the two main ways sections can partner with WSBA CLE to deliver uh, CLE content. Um, Kevin briefly touched on these, so I don't want to, to re-emphasize too much, but I, I will say that mini CLEs can be conducive to, uh, you know, changes in the law, shorter programs, um, you know, they can be, uh, as you can see there, two credits or fewer uh, and offered at $35 or less. A half day, full day events, they can be themed program, uh, they can be a themed program opportunity to dive deep into a practice area. And they typically cover more advanced material and uh, have a longer uh, lead time to program development. And they're made available on demand. Uh, so next slide, please. With that comparison, I wanted to get into a little bit more of the details of a half full or multi-day CLE. Uh, and I do want to recognize that we have a few members of our CLE team here, and I'd like to acknowledge them as well as and invite them to say hello. We have Sally Romero here as our education programs lead, primarily responsible for what we'll call the section's portfolio of work. I don't know if Sally's here. I am. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you. Thanks, Sally. 
many of you have had the opportunity to work with Sally over the last year or so and um, really uh, see your section CLEs come into fruition. Um, so Sally will be your go-to for planning and developing section CLEs. Next slide, please. Uh, this is our, our, you know, very cursory timeline for you to consider. Um, as mentioned previously, you're entering into budgeting right now. We'd ask that you note your plans pertaining to CLEs for next fiscal year in the narrative section in the lower right-hand corner of your budget worksheet. Um, and where we come in as WSBA CLE staff, we come in... Um, knowing what you've you've kind of set forth for your fiscal year and at about six months out really start engaging with your volunteers to start the planning process to start recruiting presenters developing your topic and theme three months prior to the program is really when we start to get into uh, more of that back and forth uh, logistics working to market and deliver the program and uh, Sally will most likely be your go-to in supporting working, supporting you in um, that timeline and meeting those markers. Next slide, please. As mentioned previously, section CLEs, half-day, full-day, multi-days are subject to the section fiscal policy where there is a, a share in any net revenue. This slide is a visual representation about how the the expenses and revenues are tabulated. So we have our direct and indirect expenses um, tabulated up front for both the live and on demand. And after all of those expenses are covered, there there may be a net to the section, and that net is split between WSBA and CLE. As far as revenue goes, we tabulate the live revenue from the day of uh, attendance, but we also track on-demand revenue over a three-year sales cycle. So what you'll often see is uh, kind of a, a, it's a slow trickle over a couple years, and you'll see um, if there is a, a net, you'll see a split of the net on an annual basis. Um, there are different ways that sections may uh, impact the expenses in a certain in a few ways. You do not have to budget for uh, the, the expense in your section budget, except for if you are planning any sort of lunch or reception beyond what would be normally uh, covered in the program. So if you're planning anything outside of that, you want to note that in your section budget. Um, but anything uh, related to the, the development and delivery of the program will be covered within the, the program budget. Um, but you can help by driving live attendance as well as spreading the word about on-demand products once available. Um, so we will be able to provide updates on any revenues that, throughout the year. Uh, if you ever have any questions about how a program is doing, you can always reach out to us. One thing to note is the more CLEs you have in the pipeline, the more potential split of any net you will see. So what some sections have, um, if they're delivering a couple of CLEs every year, they'll have you know, six CLEs in their pipeline of which they'll see a little bit of net um, each year. Next slide, please. I'm here, we're gonna talk about mini CLEs. We also are, uh, have the pleasure of another CLE team member and present here today. I have Rachel Motz, who heads up our mini CLE program. Rachel, I don't know if you're here and able to say hi, hello. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> hi, Rachel. So many of you may have had the pleasure of working with Rachel in the last uh, year or so to develop and deliver your mini CLEs. One thing to note is that uh, as things get updated, uh, you'll want to check the website. Um, there is a website linked on the last page of this PowerPoint slide that provides you the latest event form and other information related to mini CLEs. You can always reach out to mini CLE at wsba.org with any questions. Next slide, please. 
And I think Kevin really touched on this already. So um, I will just leave that up there for a minute. Um, again, section mini series are considered a section member benefit. They're limited to two hours or less and $35 or, or less if you are in tuition. Next slide, please. The mini CLE timeline. Um, so we can add uh, mini CLEs to the calendar up to six months ahead. And we look for what's called a completed event form to be submitted about six to eight weeks out. That event form has information as to who your presenters are, what your session titles are, descriptions, and a lot of other details. So it asks you to provide all of that information. We take that form and serve as the accreditation sponsor, get registration up and uh, report CLE credits. Again, any questions about mini CLEs as you are planning them and considering them, you'll want to reach out to mini CLE at wsba.org. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the additional references I've linked here, uh, the section mini CLE programming webpage. Any updates will be available and accessible to, via that link. Um, and also the CLE revenue sharing fiscal policy that I outlined before, um, if de developing and delivering full or half day multi-day CLEs in partnership with WSBA CLE as helpful resources. Next slide, please. Uh, so if you all have any questions, now is a good time. Well, I had a quick question. Yes. Uh, I am wondering if non-section members can bring, you know, or individuals or people who are a collection of individuals who are not section members could bring a CLE topic to the CLE section and, and how would that work? Great question. Um... I think as a team, we're always interested in new topics that might be relevant to the, the membership. Um, Kevin talked about our different portfolio areas that might fall under our WSBA Presents portfolio um, as something that might be not necessarily section specific, but maybe of general interest. So if you have an idea, please reach out to us. Um, you can start with reaching out to me. I can put my email in the chat. Um, we also have our main, maybe easier to remember, uh, email at cle at wsba.org uh, email. Does that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Kevin. Thanks, Shanti. I don't have a question, but I wanted to highlight one thing that you went over and maybe do a little more emphasis on it as you're planning your budgets. And that is if you're planning a half day or full day CLE in partnership with the Washington State Bar Association, you don't have to budget for any cost associated generally with, with that program. WISBA CLE carries the cost of, of those programs. Uh, what Shanti did say is if you, you know, want to add something to it, then you, you would want to plan for that in your section budget, like a reception or something. The other thing to kind of put a fine point on is while we share revenue, we split revenue with the sections based on the net that's, um, that is earned. If a program doesn't earn a net, the sections are not responsible for any of the cost or what you would see as a loss. So I think it's important that you understand that there's no upfront cost to you to develop the CLE with WISPA. Uh, and there's never going to be any cost passed on to you, um, you know, after the three years. In fact, uh, 
I, I, I'd be pretty safe to say most of the time, it's a net earn that you get in terms of a split net revenue. Uh, and if anyone wants to know more about the details, like to dig in further into the details of how the splits work, uh, Shanti or I would be happy to come to an EC meeting and talk about it further with you uh, to get a little more into the weeds with the details if you're interested. Yeah, so I think just as as you're thinking about going back to budgets, maybe um, as you're thinking about your budgets, while you may not need to budget for a section CLE, it's good for us to know whether or not you're planning one at this point so we can plan the next fiscal year in partnership with you uh, to understand what sort of topics we're bringing forward to the members and where there might be gaps in our offerings as well. So um, this is a good time to reflect on what your plans are for next fiscal year in addition to the numbers. Um, and then, you know, Kevin said or mentioned the, how the financials work. You know, there are a lot of different ways to look at success. And I think the numbers are one, one way to look at it if you are receiving a net and all of that. But there are important reasons to develop content um, and uh, meet those program goals outside of that, that revenue aspect. So I just want to mention that not the revenue isn't necessarily um, a goal for everybody, but it is uh, one way to track success. Carolyn wanted us to wrap up. I think that's it. Good pause here. Um, thank you so much, uh, CLE team. And as always, um, available for questions anytime, not just at special, special meetings such as these, but um, really feel free to reach out to any of the staff when questions arise. So, uh, we're moving into our open dialogue session. Um, we have received over the years various requests to have opportunities for section leaders to speak with each other, to share tips and ideas, to have, um, yeah, kind of uh, knowledge and experience sharing opportunities. Um, but this is also a question, or also a time you can ask questions of the staff. Um, and just bring up, you know, thoughts. So it's, it's really open right now for anything that's that's on your mind and that you might want to share or ask. Um, so I'm going to open it up in case any of you have arrived with uh, thoughts, you know, burning questions, ideas, that type of thing. Um, and we'll start there and then uh, see if see if we need some prompting questions along the way. But I wanted to open it up initially for any anything that you might have already arrived at the meeting with. So uh, I'll be looking for hands or comments and questions in the chat. And I see a hand from Randy Wynn from the World Peace Through Law section. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation today. And uh, I gotta say that many Sealy webinars have been just great for our section. I do have a new question that's come up recently, which has to do with section web pages. We're trying to figure out whether the web pages are primarily intended to show the world what our section is, and therefore sort of a marketing thing um, with links to history and administration and stuff like that, or is it primarily an administrative convenience where people can do things like learn who the chair is? Because the designs would be very different. And, and this is especially important because our sections necessarily use what a, a common a template 
we're all <laughs> sections just with different information. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Um, I, I would, my initial response or my I kind of feeling is that we are trying to do a little bit of both. Um, so we do have uh, certain continuity across our section's web pages uh, with the idea being that anyone can go from one to the other and know where to find things. So if they're looking for certain pieces of information about any section, um, they'll be able to find it in the same place on any section page. So it creates that continuity across, across the website for all of the sections. Um, that being said, we also want to make it a space where sections can highlight the things that they, their programs and activities um, that are important to you, um, highlights of anything that, that you, um, yeah, that you most want your members to know. So, so I think ideally it is, it is kind of that combination. Um, and I'll open it up to Julianne and uh, potentially Kevin if, you know, there are other thoughts about that. Um, kind of what, what our hopes are and what our vision is for those web pages. Well, I'll, I'll jump in. I, I think you're right. It's really a combination of, of both. I, it's important from at least our perspective that the executive committee folks are identified, that uh, links are available for them. Because if people uh, call into our service center or I've had folks contact me, uh, you know, wanting to get a hold of a section or wanting to get a hold of uh, not necessarily a particular section, but wanting information that, this, that, you know, I believe the section would be the place they'd need to go to get it. And I would refer them to it. I could refer them to that page and say, reach out to the chair or reach out to someone on the executive committee and it's all there. I think it should. I mean, ideally, it's also a place you could send folks um, who are interested in joining the section to learn more about it. Now, Randy, it sounds like you may be uh, thinking we could, there's things we could do that would be a little better to help support that um, uh, more promotion side of it. Uh, and I think that's something we could like that I'd be interested in getting more information about what your thoughts are. Um, but there is a there is definitely a a reason for having some of that more prescriptive information of who the members are and that kind of thing. Um, but but I recognize it's it's definitely not a splashy, hey, come join the section and all the reasons why. So um, so I'd be interested in hearing thoughts about how it could be leveraged maybe a little more for that. Is this a concern for uh, people in the other sections? Sunita, I see your hand and I'm wondering if, do you have a thought on this topic or should we? Oh, so I think you're on mute. Sorry, it, my my comment or question is related, but um, but I would like to hear the answer to Randy's question, and we'll come, make sure to come back. Okay. Are there other folks from other sections who might have uh, thoughts about this, about how you would hope to use your web page? What? Anything about that? Maybe a question uh, for people to think about is, do you actually run into situations where you're someone seeking information about your section and are you referring them to the web page or are you getting any comments on the web page, uh, the web pages, uh, good or bad? Um, it might that might be a way to frame it. it. Are any of you using the web page for that reason, like sending folks to it so they can learn more? Or... But this might be part of an even larger question: is how do we present our section to the outside to, to the outside world? How do we market? Because I'll be honest, I don't know anything about marketing. It might be helpful if I <laughs> if we did. Yeah. 
Well, I think you're touching on a really important subject, Randy. Um, and it has to do with, you know, the bar in general has seen volunteerism decline, first of all, since particularly since the pandemic started. I, and maybe it's something to do with that. But also, I can tell you, I've seen, it looks like in looking at the numbers, that's, that's also that same trend is affecting sections, I think. I've seen a trend where sections are little by little losing numbers every year. So, and we do a campaign every year for recruitment uh, in the bar and it's right around licensing time. So we work with Com to do a recruitment so that folks who are renewing their license are encouraged to join a section. But I think there's, I think we're getting to a time and place where there's, it would be helpful probably to get folks internally with WISBA together with some section leaders and talk about how we might work more, more together and integrated in coming up with uh, uh, membership drives and membership campaigns so that we could leverage it together. I think um, maybe there's something to that um, where, where we sync up more. Um, because we do it, but we do it around licensing season uh, and, and usually through e-blast and that kind of thing in terms of pushing out section information. But, um, but maybe if we were all working together and, and at the same time we're doing it, you're also working your networks and we're giving you tools to use to do it, might be gain a little more leverage. I think uh, Pablo Hospital, pardon me if I mispronounced your name, made a, a, an interesting comment that the, the larger topic might be creating community spaces in general, like mm -hmm. a Slack channel or something, so we can work together conveniently. Uh, Pablo, is that what you were trying to say? Yeah, thanks, Randy. Um, in that sense, I think, you know, there's what I've noticed about the website is that it's very static, right? It doesn't really lend itself. Mm -hmm. To any sort of networking or anything. It's more of a here's some information that may or may not be fresh. Oftentimes it is a little bit stale. So I think part of what we should be doing or striving to do is create, move, move the networking into a more dynamic space so that it's not just emailing a list or and hoping someone replies, where most people will just ignore the email because it's spam or whatever but rather start creating spaces for people to communicate, whether that's through Slack channel or communities or, or teams or whatever you know, platform we wanna think of, but, but start creating more of a virtual uh, community now that we've transitioned a little bit more to this remote slash um, tech supported environment, right? And particularly because not everyone is based in sort of the King County area, even though a lot of our members are, um, having more spaces, more virtual spaces will allow us to connect to the entire membership throughout the state um, more, more often, and I think more meaningfully as well. And Sunitha, I know you have your hand up, but um, could I just make one comment uh, and I may ask, and Paris, I may put you on the spot here. I know, I think Paris Erickson, our volunteer engagement advisor, is here. Is that you, Paris? I am here, yep. Awesome. Um, and I don't want to go too far down, down a rabbit hole with this, but we're looking, we're piloting a, a volunteer platform that may get to some of this um, ability to pull people together. Um, and Paris, I might just turn it over to you to talk a little bit about that. I know you're leading it because it sounds like that could be an opportunity if it moves forward to allow sections to do some of exactly what Randy and Pablo are talking about. Yes, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> we're currently working through a contract to um, move forward with a one year pilot project with a company called Higher Logic. 
And the scope of the pilot project would be to support 10 to 12 uh, volunteer groups. So our universe for this pilot would be focused on supporting the work and the engagement of section executive committee members, for example. And Higher Logic would allow us to create communities for each section executive committee where you could um, chat with each other. You can um, post materials. Let's say you want to share the upcoming agenda or a draft CLE agenda that you're working on for a mini CLE. It can become kind of a workspace for, for a section executive committee. And we anticipate um, you know, this to be something that could be very helpful for our volunteer groups, including committees, boards, and section executive committees. One feature about Higher Logic that I am excited about is it does have the capacity to expand in terms of scope. So if the pilot goes well, I would anticipate we would reach out and engage with all of our volunteer groups as kind of the next phase. Again, if the pilot were successful, we would then move towards our larger volunteer community. Um, and then beyond that, you know, maybe there's possibilities to open it up to section members and create online communities for section members within those sections to engage with each other and to engage with the executive committee. Um, so again, we're still kind of working through the contract. If all goes well, we'll embark on that one-year pilot project. I anticipate to be connecting with Julianne and her team in order to engage some section executive committees that would be interested in that pilot project. Um, and so more to come on that, and I can answer any other questions. Um, but that's just a little, little gist of kind of what we have lined up that should really start to kick off pretty soon, again, if all goes well. But pretty soon, we should be able to move forward with that. Um, Kevin, does that kind of no. satisfy? Did you have it? Okay, great. <laughs> well, unless others have questions. Yeah, absolutely. That's what was running through my head when uh, Randy and Pablo were talking is this might be an area that they could. Yeah, this and this is something with. I've been looking into for a very long time. And this is something I know section executive committee members have been talking about for a long time. So I am really excited that we're able to kind of move forward in what I think is a really positive direction that can really help move your volunteer work away from email <laughs> and into a more centralized space. Um, I think that can be really important. And then again, knowing that um, down the road, it has the potential to, to move to a much wider uh, audience in terms of engagement, you know, maybe, Maybe we're moving away from our listservs and where your section is completely on a community on this tool down the road. That's definitely something to keep in mind as we move forward. And yeah, I can answer any questions or people can contact me offline too, if that's helpful. Thanks, Pierce. I am noticing the time. So I wanna make sure we yeah, get sure. this, Samitha. Um, and if we have more time and, and yes, knowing that um, you are also available to answer questions. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Um, Sunita? I'm really just briefly, I'm so excited by this, these discussions and the dialogue. One of the things that really strikes me is that only 9,000 of our members are availing themselves of mm -hmm. sections. And that's a pretty, to me, a stark number. Um, so I think this movement forward and, and Paris, what you are describing just sounds very positive. Um, and I also hope that we will get to have more opportunities like this to speak with the section leaders and members because they are the ones who also know, you know, how we should be reaching out to other members. So I'm really, really excited about moving forward with, with the project and I hope we can get our numbers up. Thank you. Anyone else in the last minutes? I know this, this ended up being a little bit of a shorter time slot than we were hoping, and we can maybe consider just having a separate lunch discussion time that's devoted to this in the, in the future, if that's of interest. I'm glad we're having some discourse. Um, any last questions?
Well, before we close, I might want to give a, a shout out or a mention to, I see Martha's on with ELUL. It sounds like Martha, and I thought we had someone else from ELUL. Well, Jason and Martha are on. Your mid-year is going gangbusters, it sounds like. Um, we filled up the venue. It sounds like the venue's full. Uh, so it's really encouraging to see that, um, that folks are turning out. What are your thoughts? I'd say, honestly, I'm a little disappointed that we're not back up to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, yeah. We're still, you know, 30 to 50 people below, I think, what the ELUL got at the mid-year in those, but it's definitely much better than last year. So yeah. um, that's nice. You know, last year was pretty low turnout, and there was a lot of uncertainty about doing a hybrid event. Um, so, you know, we'll uh, see what we have in store yeah. for next year. Do you feel like it's trending up and we might want to go for more um, like a bigger room block or that kind of thing? Definitely. And I think we'll want to be really careful about the venue selection to make sure that yeah. there's enough space. You know, yeah. pre-pandemic, we kind of went back and forth between Alderbrook and Suncadia, but Alderbrook mm -hmm. doesn't have that hybrid option or at least hasn't the last couple of times we've asked. So I think we'll you know, need to factor that in in the future um, yeah. to make sure we get back up, have enough space for the old capacity. Yeah, yeah, it feels like it's almost there again. Yeah, which is great. That'll be yeah. fabulous when that happens. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I do want to be mindful of folks' time. Um, just want to thank you all again for coming. Um, a reminder that we will be following up this week with a meeting evaluation via email and then also links to the recording of the meeting and uh, the PowerPoint. And we put posting that on the volunteer toolbox as well. So, um, and again, as always, thank you for your dedication to your sections and to the WISBA's mission. Um, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.